Welcome to In Search of Heaven's Gate, an exploration of the history, beliefs, and practices of the Heaven's Gate movement. This is Episode 3, A Puzzling Problem, Questioning the Metaphysics of Heaven's Gate. We've already learned some of the basics of the Heaven's Gate belief system, including their ideas about the purpose of human life and their ideas about what happens after death. We've looked at some of the explanations offered by the group for why they thought that they were attracted to and convinced by these teachings, whereas most others were not. And we've seen that the followers of Heaven's Gate believe they are in contact, at least some of the time, with members of a higher kingdom called the Next Level, although the exact nature of these communications remains to be clarified. We're still very early on in our study of the Heaven's Gate religion, but already, at least a few contradictions seem to be emerging, and I ended the last episode by highlighting what some of these are. On the one hand, followers of Heaven's Gate believed that they would be transported to the next level after death, provided, of course, that they had successfully overcome their humanness while living on Earth. Interestingly, they maintained that this next level was not some spiritual, ethereal realm, but a literal, physical place in the universe. As I noted last time, this appears to contradict some of their other beliefs, in particular, their belief in reincarnation. Whether or not this is a genuine contradiction within the Heaven's Gate belief system remains to be seen. Perhaps there is an explanation for how these views can be reconciled after all. But before we can answer this question, I think it's important that we understand why it's arisen in the first place. And to do that, we'll start by examining some of the group's metaphysical views, that is, their beliefs about the nature and structure of reality itself. One of the most striking features of the Heaven's Gate belief system is that, unlike many other religions, Their understanding of the universe's structure appears to posit a materialist framework. When we talk about materialism, here we are not referring to a person's obsession with wealth, with owning fancy clothes and driving fast cars or anything like that. Instead, we're referring to the way in which someone conceptualizes the fundamental makeup of reality. Materialism, in this sense of the word, refers to the view that reality is fundamentally made of matter, physical matter. While there are some exceptions, such as the 17th century Dutch philosopher Baruch Spinoza, those who adopt a materialist view of reality are much more likely to reject the existence of God, supernatural forces, life after death, and the soul. That's because a materialist framework is one which excludes the belief in some other non-physical side of reality, some other realm that exists beyond what we can access through sight, touch, taste, and so on. As we know, followers of the Heaven's Gate religion maintain that the next level, essentially their understanding of the afterlife, is a literal physical kingdom located somewhere in the physical universe, not, as we might expect, in some other dimension or outside of material reality. What makes this so striking is that this understanding of the afterlife, as it appears within the Heaven's Gate belief system, appears to differ from those of many other religions. Again, always with some exceptions, the vast majority of other religious belief systems could be classified not as materialist, but rather as idealist. An idealist framework is one which does allow for the existence of some other non-physical side of reality. Whether this other side of reality is couched in terms like the world of the spirit, the realm of ideas, the mind of God, or something else along those lines. Thus, within metaphysics, idealism is contrasted with materialism. On a materialist account, there is no other side to reality. There's only the physical world. We can probably already see how many familiar religions would fall under the idealist classification rather than a materialist one. Christianity, the primary religion from which Heaven's Gate claims to have derived many of their own ideas, 
is generally one which posits the existence of some other spiritual side of reality, in addition to the physical world we live in. Christians don't deny that the physical world exists, but they would hold that this is not the only aspect of reality. The Christian religion posits the existence of a world beyond what we can perceive through our senses. And we see this in their concept of the afterlife, heaven, or the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God, for most Christians, is not some place we could ever travel to while still inhabiting our physical bodies. It's important to note that this is not just due to the limitations we presently face with respect to space travel. That is to say, even if we somehow developed technology which would allow us to venture from the Earth all the way to the edge of the universe, we would still never reach the kingdom of God in this way. That's because God and his heavenly kingdom is located outside of the physical world. Our access to this realm is not just constrained by what we can or cannot achieve through space travel, rather, it's constrained by the very nature of what the afterworld is, someplace beyond sensuous reality. It's someplace we can only hope to arrive at after we are deceased, at which point it will not be our physical bodies as they presently exist which make it to the pearly gates, but our souls, the soul of course being something spiritual, something non-physical. This is where we start to run into problems when attempting to make sense of the Heaven's Gate religion, especially with respect to their metaphysical beliefs, including those that pertain to the notion of the afterlife and the soul. Recalling that the Heaven's Gate religion is one which posits an account of reincarnation, a cycle of birth, death, and rebirth experienced by living beings, we find that such an account seems, at least at first glance, to conflict with their ostensibly materialist sketch of reality. Let's unpack why exactly that is. First, consider what it means to say that a person's soul continues to exist even after their physical body has died. Consider what might be entailed by belief in reincarnation, the idea that one's soul is incarnated in various bodies throughout many, many lifetimes. Well, for one thing, we'll notice that such beliefs appear to suppose that there is some distinction between the soul of an individual and the body they presently occupy. To the soul, we ascribe such qualities as eternality, persistence through time and across a variety of circumstances into which it flows. To the body, of course, such characteristics are not ascribed. The body endures for only a fixed length of time. Eventually, it dies and decays. This appears to track well with how the followers of Heaven's Gate have historically talked about their own conception of the soul. They seem to believe that when a person's body dies, something else inside them passes on, or at least has the potential to pass on, given the right conditions, into the afterworld as they understand it, the next level. If the right conditions are not met, for example, if a living representative from the next level is not incarnated at the time when a particular person's body dies, or if the individual failed to recognize and follow the practices required for entry into this higher kingdom, then that individual's soul would reincarnate. It would take on another body. It would live another life. This is not so different from the way in which some other belief systems which posit the existence of something like a soul might conceptualize it. We see connections between the soul as it is conceived of by followers of Heaven's Gate and similar notions found in a variety of other belief systems, including Christianity, Hinduism, and even Socratic philosophy. Setting aside for now the obvious and important differences between these various belief systems, including those pertaining to their respective views of the afterlife, we need to consider carefully the conceptual problem that's beginning to emerge here within the Heaven's Gate belief system specifically. On the one hand, we have this idea that the afterlife is a physical location in the universe. On the other hand, we have this idea that a person's soul, under the right conditions, may pass on to this other kingdom after their body has died. These two ideas seem to be in conflict with one another, leading us to wonder whether the Heaven's Gate belief system is really as materialist as its followers seem to maintain. Is their belief system just inconsistent? Are they being deliberately deceptive about what they actually believe? Or is there something else at play here? 
Earlier, I mentioned that the teachings of Heaven's Gate, as they have appeared in the written and recorded materials of the group, often employ two seemingly distinct terms in a way which appears to suggest that they are actually interchangeable. These two terms are soul and mind. We see throughout the history of Heaven's Gate references being made to the soul or mind of an individual in a way which lends itself to the idea that these two concepts are not actually distinct from one another. Then again, in other places, this distinction seems to be drawn more sharply. So at this point, a few questions seem to emerge. First, do the followers of Heaven's Gate maintain that there is a distinction between the soul and the mind of an individual? Or would they say that these two terms are essentially referring to the same concept? If there is a distinction, what is it? If not, why do they so often choose to use both terms alongside one another? Whether or not the mind or the soul are in fact distinct notions within the Heaven's Gate religion, how can we possibly reconcile their beliefs about the afterlife with their other beliefs about the fundamental makeup of reality? Is Heaven's Gate a materialist religion, or is it an idealist one? And why does it seem so difficult to tell? Before we get too worried, let's keep in mind that one of the distinguishing features of the Heaven's Gate belief system is their frequent practice of term substitution. This is something we should already be at least somewhat familiar with from previous episodes. For instance, we already know that followers of Heaven's Gate routinely substituted ordinary terms like body and job with extraordinary terms like vehicle or out-of-craft task. And we may recall that one of the reasons they did so was in order to reinforce for themselves this notion that they were not of this world, that their true place of origin was the next level. Accepting such ideas on faith alone is quite difficult. Every moment lived within a human body seems to count against the idea that one is something other than a human. Perhaps they thought that if they changed the way they spoke about themselves, then over time they could change the way they thought about themselves. Maybe they thought they could speak these ideas into being. But this was not the only reason followers of Heaven's Gate employed this sort of linguistic hijacking, if you will. They also wanted their ideas to be appealing to as broad an audience as possible. To that end, they often employed terms from a variety of viewpoints and traditions, combining them in ways that they hoped would be inclusive to everyone, even though in many cases it didn't always work out exactly the way they hoped, like sometimes it actually would lead to more confusion rather than less. For example, when discussing their conception of the afterlife, they didn't always confine themselves to their own terminology. Rather, they would employ a variety of other terms alongside the ones they used amongst themselves. So we see numerous places in the literature and videos of Heaven's Gate where Applewhite and other members of the group will refer to the afterlife not just by their own designator of the next level, but also by terms which they hoped would be more accessible to those who were unfamiliar with their teachings. For example, the kingdom of God. They would use these terms interchangeably with one another. Given this, could it be possible that something similar is going on with their frequent employment of the terms mind and soul alongside one another, as though these two terms were also interchangeable? Well, as it turns out, there is at least one instance in their literature where the members of Heaven's Gate offer precisely such an idea. And that's what we'll be looking at next time. But before we wrap things up, let's take stock of where we've gotten so far. We started out with a question about some apparent inconsistencies within the Heaven's Gate belief system. We haven't exactly arrived at an answer to this question just yet. In fact, you may find yourself left with more questions than we started out with. That's okay. To paraphrase Douglas Adams, author of The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, before we can get an answer, we have to make sure we're asking the right questions. An appropriate work to quote from, I think, given the topic. And approaching a topic like the Heaven's Gate religion from a philosophical perspective requires that we take a little extra time to really zero in on the problems we want to address and the questions we want answered. Slowly but surely, the pieces of the puzzle will fall into place. 
But for now, at least one thing does seem certain. And that is that the Heaven's Gate religion is much more complex than many of us might have initially thought. And at this early stage in our inquiry, the rationale behind their beliefs is probably still more confusing than not. Some of that could stem from preconceived ideas that we might have about what they actually believed, but we're also starting to find that some of this confusion stems from the way in which the group themselves chose to present their own ideas. Nevertheless, it's my belief that the members of this group, past and present, remain the best sources for information about what they themselves believed, or what they currently believe. We might not agree with them, but hopefully we can learn to understand them. In the next episode, we're going to make our first entry into some of the literature that was actually written by Heaven's Gate believers, where we'll start to uncover some of their ideas about the mind, the body, and the soul. Until then, this concludes Episode 3 of In Search of Heaven's Gate. Thanks for listening.